Hello and welcome to another Total Education Centre lecture. Today's lecture is going to be on wild grapes by Kenneth Slesser. Don't forget to visit the Total Education Centre website at totaleducationcentre.com.au for all your educational needs. If you like and find this useful, press the like button down below, that would be very helpful. And please do leave any comments or suggestions or questions and I'll get back to you as quickly as I can. As I said today, we're going to talk about wild grapes and wild grapes is another place that Slessor goes that he develops that idea of the ambiguity between you know time and the movement of time and, the, and, and modern life and all those sorts of images that become very very important later on and it's certainly not one of his later works and it's a developmental poem in many ways much like country towns and I'd remind you to go and have a look at that country towns lecture prior to watching this one if you're studying country towns because it does contain other details that might, you might find useful in, in looking at this poem. And I'll begin by talking about a general discussion of wild grapes, and I won't read the poem just let I just want to give you some background to that poem, and I've made some notes here. In Wild Grapes, Slessor describes a place where time seems to stand still, and events and memories from the past are here and part of the present. And it's that importance of, of binding the past and the present, I think, Slessor develops very clearly in this poem, and that becomes a major theme later on in his works in some of the more complex poems, such as Five Bells. Here in Wild Grapes, the vivid descriptions of the old orchard are drawn from the present, but are developed and referenced from lucid memories. The Isabella Grapes remind uh, the persona of a girl who was there in the orchard in times past. And that's a very, very um, interesting idea that the grapes and the girl are nearly personified and drawn together, and I'll talk about that in more detail later. <clears throat> Isabella grapes are a, a real variety of grape and are very common, and in the time when Slessor was writing the poetry in the early 900s, they were a very common variety of grape that was used in dom for domestic purposes to grow on um, verandas to supply lots of shade. The grapes themselves um, here are called, they're very bitter and they're only good for preserves, jams and things like that. It's very interesting to, to note, and I'll have a look at the poem now before I do go on, but it, we, I want to get back to the idea, and, and listen when I read the poem to that, that sense of personification of, of drawing together the grapes and Isabella. Wild grapes, the old orchard full of smoking air, full of sour mash and broken boughs is there but kept no more by vanished mulligans or hartigans long drowned in earth themselves, who gave this bitter fruit their care. Here's where the cherries grew that birds forgot, and apples bright as dog stars. Now there is not an apple, or a cherry, only grapes, but wild ones, Isabella grapes they're called, small, pointed, black, like boughs of musket shot. Eating their flesh half savage with black fur, acid and gypsy sweet, I thought of her, Isabella, the dead girl who has lingered on defiantly when all have gone away, in an old orchard where swallows never stir. Isabella grapes, outlaws of a strange bough, that in their harsh sweetness remind me somehow of dark hair swinging and silver pins, a girl half fierce, half melting, as these grapes kissed here or killed here, but who remembers now? That's a very early poem of Slessor's, but, but still very good and, and one well worth studying. I'd like to get back to that idea of drawing the two elements together at the moment. And the poem is a type of personification in many ways, as Isabella and the grapes are merged as one. And the images around Isabella, uh, which form her persona, and that's what captures the reader's attention. And I think it's the, the mystery of the girl that really makes this poem um, well loved and well liked and critically acclaimed in many ways because we wonder who is this Isabella, what did she do, what happens to Isabella and I think the poem ends on that sort of rhetorical question but who remembers now links it back to that concept of time that's so important in Celeste's poetry and we are intrigued by Isabella, what happened to her in the orchard it seems that Slessor himself is intrigued by Isabella and I think that comes through in the, in the writing of the poem that he's interested in what happened himself and, and what about this orchard and what happens here. I mean, this, this poem really is a play on memory and time. 
and more accurately shows the ravages of time on memory. And I think that's the key concept that you should take away from this poem and, and one that should be a focus all the way through. We see memory is faulty and we see this very clearly in the first stanza when he says the old orchard full of smoking air, full of sour mash and broken boughs is there. And if we think back to the original orchard, it's a wonderful place and he comments on that later, but the ravages of time have certainly got it. And he says, but kept no more by vanished mulligans or hardigans long drowned in earth themselves. And that shows that memory fades and memory's gone away and the original people that lived on the place have died and moved on. And again, it's much like country towns where he mentions the Hogans. And there's that, that sense of, in a, in a country place, that there's that continuity of line and, and people went out and developed it and they seem Irish names again in this, but it's coincidental in many ways. And he says, this old abandoned orchard was once a very successful place. And in, in, in memory, if we think back, it was a wonderful time. Here's where the cherries grew that birds forgot, and apples bright as dog stars. It's a very interesting description of apples, isn't it? That apples are not necessarily seen as bright, but he remembers them that way. And that's that trick of memory that he wants to play on. Now there is not an apple or a cherry, only grapes. And that sort of signifies a bit of a change in the poem when we see that line and he says only grapes. Because that's the introduction to the main idea of the poem in many ways. What he's done in that first stanza and a half is he's set up the, the scene and he's given us an entree into it and he's developed in our mind the imagination. He's placed us very clearly in the orchard and he's given very clear descriptions. The old orchard full of smoking air and that the idea of smoking air and you don't really see smoking air. It's more of a usually what would be described as a fog or a haze. But what Celeste does in those, those opening lines is set it up like a foggy memory with that smokiness and the blurriness of it. And that's a really nice image that he does. But let's move on to the wild ones, Isabella grapes. And he starts by talking about the grapes and we get the repetition of the word grapes there too. And he says, but wild ones. And that reflects Isabella, doesn't it? Isabella grapes, they're called small, pointed, black, like boughs of musket shot. And we get those images of the grapes. And if you look at the little picture I put, for this video, you'll see very clearly what, what that represents. And I've done that deliberately. Sorry, so, <clears throat> so you can see that that's how the grapes sit on the vine if you've never seen that before. And they do look like boughs of musket shot. And he says, then we go back to those images. We've had, we've had the sight images. We've had those sensual images and what they're like. And now we get that taste idea. Eating their flesh, half savage with black fur. And it's the person actually eating them. And then that triggers again that sensualness and the, the senses trigger memory very clearly. And he says acid and gypsy sweet. And the gypsy then leads us into the idea of this, the romanticised vision of Isabella. I thought of her, Isabella, the dead girl who was lingered on. And, and that's a mystery in itself, isn't it? That, that whole concept of what Isabella was, what Isabella did, um, why did she die? What happened to her? All those sorts of images. And it makes us think about the poem. And Celeste has really clearly drawn us in very carefully into that poem. And Isabella, the dead girl who has lingered on, and how has she lingered on? She's lingered on not just in the orchard, but in our memories and, and what we think of her. And defiantly, when all have gone away in an old orchard where swallows never stir. So it seems that the grapes have hung on when they shouldn't have hung on. Everything else has died, the grapes are still there, and so is the memory of Isabella. And they're sort of in this lifeless orchard where the swallows didn't, don't stir anymore, there's nothing there, there's still this life, and they're hanging on like her memory. And they're in some ways they're nearly defying time. And isn't that what memory does? And then that, we get to that last stanza, the Isabella grapes, outlaws of a strange bow. Then in a harsh sweetness, remind me somehow. And again, I'd like you to point out and remember the idea of the, the harsh sweetness and that ambiguity and the, that whole flow of ambiguity that goes right through all of Celeste's poems. And the really nice links between the poems and you can get those ideas to flow very carefully between the two. And her, of dark hair and silver pins, a girl half fierce, half melting. And those suggestions, the ideas suggested there, so she's fierce, 
but she's half melting too, so she's hard and kind and all those sorts of things. And she becomes nearly a, a real person with that sense of mystery. As these grapes kissed here or killed here, but who remembers how? And that wonderful last line where it says, kissed here or killed here, but who remembers now? What happened to Isabella? What happened to that, that wonderful girl? Um, why she died? Why is she here? And we need to think very carefully about the sensual imagery, how he builds the gypsy image and how he builds on that for her and all those ideas that she could be untamed, wild, sensual and dangerous, that half melting, um, kissed here, all those sorts of ideas. There's a real sensuality towards this end of the poem and it really draws us into that concept of Isabella. What I'm going to do at the end of this lecture, in, in the slides at the end where I usually put the notes, I'm going to give you some questions on wild grapes and I'm going to ask you to look at some of the things that I've talked about in here and do some analysis for yourself. Again, like country towns, this is a relatively simple poem, full of ideas, but, but the concerns that flow very clearly through. I'd just like to finish this lecture by reading a short section, again from Berg, who, who says, Although this poem, and that's Wild Grapes we're talking about, cannot happily be compared with Celeste's mature work, it does show signs of some of the skills of the poet's craft that were to be recognised as typical of Celeste's later mature style of writing. It also reflects some of the ideas he was trying on for size as he learned his craft. And he talks about here, while grapes details like sour mash and broken boughs and those images that, that we can link back, the very concrete images that link back to country towns, and yet those the, the more um, non-literal images, the figurative images that come towards the latter half of the poem, and the haunting images of, Is of Isabella and what happened to her, and she feels like she's alive in, in that wild, wild orchard. And it's, it's a very lovely poem. And we feel at the end of the thing that Slessa is nearly in love with Isabella in many ways, just that, that haunting vagueness and, and the memory. And, and isn't it true that we love memories more than we love the present in many ways, and memories change us. So really, that's Wild Grapes. I hope you've enjoyed that. Don't forget to have a look at the notes at the end of the lecture. I'll put some there for you and the questions that I'm going to, going to discuss with Wild Grapes. Don't forget to visit totaleducationcentre.com.au. I'm Bruce Pattinson. Any questions or comments, feel free to leave them. Thanks for listening.